All right, my friends, we are back. If you were watching the previous video on YouTube, I apologize because for about the last five-ish minutes of that video, it was nothing but muted intermission screen because I forgot to stop the recording. And I'm not very good at video editing, so it's going to stay there forever. Or at least as long as YouTube lasts. In the meantime, we, we return uh, to our scene. The battle is about to begin. It is morning. The sun has just cleared the nearby trees and hills. The men are ready and anxious, horses neighing, pawing at the ground, and waiting for the command to charge. All across the two lines of forces, of which Uther's troops appear to outnumber Gorlo, something like two to one or more, uh, flags and banners flutter in the wind. The chosen battlefield appears to be a clearing amidst a larger wood with clumps of trees scattered across the plain before eventually being swallowed up by the local forest. Uther rides forward to parley. Merlin accompanies him. Gorlo advances on horse to meet him. Uh, he has one or two of his uh, closest advisors, I guess, would be the appropriate word. And Uther can be heard shouting, One land! One king! As they draw closer. Justice! Shouts Gorlo back. Merlin can be seen reaching for Uther, or perhaps motioning for him to do something. Uh, Uther draws out Excalibur, and it gleams, bright, searing white light, reflecting off the blade, radiant in even this kind of early morning light. And that light spreads, revealing more of Gorlo's troops hidden within the woods all around the battlefield. So Talus in the background screaming ambush was actually right. <laughs> uh, Gorlo turns his head, at first from the light of Excalibur, and then to look back to his own lines and his nobles. There are many worried faces. Behold, the sword of victory! Forged when the world was young, Merlin exclaims in a loud, booming voice that rolls through the land. The Duke can be seen conversing briefly with his nearest advisors, and then he turns to face towards Uther, and he shouts, And if I surrender, what do I get? You get? A look of fury can be seen across Uther's face, even as Merlin gains his attention for a quick, quiet discussion. A moment later... And Uther seems to calm a bit and shouts back to Gorlo, All the land from here to the sea to hold for the king. I accept, shouts the duke. A big cheer goes up from both armies, and everyone can say afterwards that they were pleased with the nobility of the lords and with the good that was done for Logris. Uh, so instead of a great big battle, ha, I fooled you, suckers. I'm just kidding. Uh, there is no battle this day. Uh, instead... Uh, Duke Gorlo appears to be welcomed back into the fold. Uh, the two armies spend the rest of the day and into the evening drinking and talking together. Gorlo and Uther are seen, and then they're, they disappear together to Uther's great big fat tent, because as a king, that's what you get. Uh, um, go ahead. Question. Yes. Either above table or in character. I'm, I'm leaning over to Sir Dallin as the master of rumor and mm. saying what did he mean by for justice what ill did the king did he seek from the king to rectify uh is that something i would just be able to pull a uh like an intrigue out of just to see if i've heard about that type of rumor you can roll intrigue Oop, that's not the one i wanted What's your intrigue again? Like, it's definitely a 10 or better. So I crit. <laughs> nice. Uh, if you check my intrigue. Yes, if you haven't already checked it, please check it. Um, there has always been a... What's the word I want to use here? There's always been animosity between Gorlo and Uther. Uh... I'll be totally honest, as the GM to the players, I cannot tell you why. And that is simply because I just have not been able to figure it out. So I'm going to make some shit up that may or may not be accurate, and it may not at all reflect uh, the life and death of King, uh, King Arthur by 
Fuck, I can't remember his name. It starts with an M, I think. Uh, right, well, here, here, go ahead. Here, here, what if we offer this? What if in the in the winter phase, to give you a week, mm -hmm. we we essentially plan, as we're discussing this, we have planned to approach Sir Roderick and ask him directly... What does what he know? Sort of, yeah, what sort of justice? Um, did. okay, I got you. So, here's what happens. The, yeah, yeah. To, yeah, I think what we get out. here, as far as what Sir Dallin would know, is that for as long as anybody can clearly remember, going back several years, uh, since Uther first showed up in Britain, uh, however long ago it was, and beat the shit out of, uh, Vortigern, I think was his name, uh... There has been animosity between Uther and Gorlo. And a lot of that animosity seems to come from the fact that, uh, if you guys recall, there are many different groups of people that believe Uther... Uh, I'm trying to figure out how to phrase this. Give me a second. Uther is perceived by many to believe he is entitled to be the High King simply because... Other pen dragons before him have been High King. Uh, Duke Ambro or excuse me, uh, Ambrosius, or Aurelius Ambrosius, I believe was the first actual pen dragon, and then he was killed, and somebody else took over for a little bit, and then he was killed, and that was actually Uther's brother. And I may have the names a little bit out of order without looking in the book Daddy. directly, huh? I said Daddy. Yeah, basically. Uh, so in Uther's mind. The argument is that Uther believes he is entitled to being the High King versus someone who goes out and earns the position by virtue, by conquest, by whatever. And so Gorlo is one of those people that is perhaps more deeply rooted or more deeply seated in that belief of Uther does not deserve to be king. He has a long way to go to prove his worth to be the High King of Britain. And so that is the source of this major animosity. And perhaps, as far as Sir, Sir Dallin would know, despite the fact that you rolled a critical on that, is that at some point in time, perhaps during a negotiation or other discussion about how to bring the lands together, Uther grievously offended Gorlo. And so now that animosity is even worse and Gorlo is even less likely, less inclined to participate in anything that Uther wants to accomplish, such as uh, eventually uniting all of the British Isles. Does that make sense to everybody where I'm going there? Did I confuse anybody or lose anyone? Yeah. Talus, Ro? I'm good. Good answer. Are you willing to wait for like a deferred answer on your critical? I could try to give a little bit more information through Roderick. Uh, at you know when we get to winter phase next session, uh, but for now, what Sir Dallin believes is that through rumors and conjecture and observances or observations rather, that historically there has been a lot of bad blood between the two, going as far back as when Uther first became the king of Logris, um, and that somewhere along the way, in trying to bring Duke Gor Gorlo and Cornwall into the fold. He grievously offended him, though perhaps the specifics of that offense are not yet very well known or have been uh, more or less hushed, hushed up, covered up, you know, glossed over, uh, perhaps because of how serious they were. Because I do know some stuff, like, again, GM to players, I know some stuff is about to go down between Uther and Gorlo over the next handful of years that plays into the rest of the campaign. So I don't want to give away too much in that particular regard. Okay. But I do know, like I said, with stuff that I do know, it's more about what comes next versus what's happened in the past. I've not been able to quite figure out why uh, Gorlo and Uther have issue, you know, prior to 485. But for whatever reason, they have. <clears throat> and perhaps that's part of the reason why things that will happen in 490 moving forward, you know, perhaps that's part of the reason why those things happen then. Uh, historically, Gorlo has intentionally missed muster, 
has not actively supported Uther. The best thing that Cornwall or Duke Gorlo has done in the last several years is effectively keep the Irish out of Britain. That's pretty much it. A noble goal. I mean, in all things being what they are, yes. Yes. Um, there is a lot of, you know, there's a lot of, like, tension being relieved because, the, you know, it's one thing when you muster the army to go fight a bunch of Saxons or even when you go and send a bunch of the army guys off to, excuse me, off to the continent. But it's another when they are, in effect, fighting uh, one another, which is basically, excuse me, which is basically what this is. You know, Logris going to fight Cornwall. Now, there was a lot of people that were kind of excited about that because they felt that ultimately they were going to be bringing Cornwall back into the fold. It's just that instead of having to fight, they've managed to do it with words. So there's a little bit of uh, relaxation, some relief, and now people are happy. Uh, by morning, the very next morning, it is discovered that the Cornish army is gone. Uther looks smug, and he marches his army north to Lindsay. As you guys may or may not recall, there are two new Saxon kings to the north, uh, sieging, or excuse me, besieging uh, Ibericum, which is where Duke Lindsay is. Um, actually, it's not entirely act. No, Duke Lindsay is up in Lincoln, but Ibericum is like not far away further north. Uh, so Uther is decided that he will now take the army and head up to Rostock, which I may have mispronounced, but they it is up. Uh, where is it? It is. Where is it? Right here. Nope, 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 nope. Come back. So you guys are now all the way up there. Uh, after, you know, a week or two of travel. Probably not even quite that long, but, you know, you get the idea. Uh, King Uther sends his, or leads the army up to Rostock, and then sends his knights and soldiers to hunt down any Saxons they can find. Uh, neither Uther nor Okta and Eosa, which are the two Saxon kings up this way now, want to have a bit a pitched battle. I almost said bitched battle. <laughs> I'm sorry. Let me compose myself here. Uh, neither Uther... Huh? I said, well, if there's Saxons involved... There's definitely some bitching going on, yes. Um, neither Uther nor the Saxon kings want to have an actual straight-up fight, so a lot of the fighting is actually limited to skirmishes, and it is now one such skirmish in which you guys find yourself in uh, when your group under Sir Amig, his knights, and the rest of you guys, as well as everyone's man-at-arms, encounters a large group of Saxons led by a thane uh, that you are now in a position to engage. So let me pull up some stuff. Let me give you guys a little bit of separation here. Uh, objects. Saved objects. Three? Is that where they are? Where are my Saxons? Saxon archer, Saxon warrior. Is this the one I want? Yes. Okay. I don't need more than that. A whole party of Saxon archers. Uh, that would be hilarious, actually. Especially considering somebody's love for yeah, yeah. for that. Uh, and then, do, is this the one I want for the other one? No, it is not. All right, uh, let's see. You guys will have. Hold on, let me let me get in here so I can see what I'm doing. Effectively, you guys will be broken down into two of these fuckers a piece. Everything's so tiny. Uh, well, they're meant to be to scale to each other without having to rescale you guys. Yeah, yeah. No, no, I just, I had to zoom way in on the table to see Yeah, what I, I did too. Alright, and let me refer to my notes. Okay. Alright. Uh, you each have two, but you are starting mounted. So, uh, wow, I really should have thought this out a little bit. Here, I can actually grab one of these guys and use these. Oh, that still puts me way over. Okay, whatever. Alright, I'm going to do something a little weird. Bear with me just a second here.
Just now? Nope. Nope. Uh, what'd you say? You I'm said gonna I'm gonna do something a little weird, and I said just now? Yeah, yeah. So essentially, we're facing off against Saxons to the north. Uh, yeah. These are the northern Saxons that you guys are about to go and deal with. Damn it. Damn it. A sheen of energy appears to pulse around me, and my hair grows long and yellow and spiky as I call on my hate Saxons fashion. Okay, uh, would, you, would you turn into a Pokemon or something? What is no, this? Uh, Super, I think he's making Super, Saiyan. Super Saiyan, okay, yeah. That was, <laughs> it was coming to, like, I, I knew what the reference was, more or less, but... Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, we will start with Sir Everhart because he has the highest glory of the group. You have two Saxons in front of you. You have your normal range of options, and you are mounted, which will give you a plus five, and they will have a minus five right off the bat. You have your spears and such, so you can lance if you like and do horse damage to one of them at least. Did we ever rule? If, since my, I've got a big two-handed axe, if I can use that from horseback? Uh, just gonna go with no. Okay. Um, I feel like between controlling the horse and the fact that it's a two, built as a two-handed weapon that isn't technically in the book yet for now, that just no. That's not the way it works in Bannerlord. Um, uh, well, you know what? Bannerlord is a completely fictitious uh, thing, so... I know. Um... <clears throat> It, 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 it also kind of makes sense that I... I mean, technically, horses would be well enough trained that you really don't even need to have your hands on the rein in combat because you've got one hand on the shield and one hand on the lance. But yeah. I digress. Yes. But the two-handed um, axe is just unwieldy, com I, I even compared you. to an axe. Because you can... Ca you. Because usually, I mean, granted, in the 400s, couching a lance isn't nearly so simple as it is much later in European history. But I digress. <coughs> Um, so yeah, I'll be, I'll be making a, do we have enough room to make a charge? Yes. You, um, you're, I will, I'll say this. Let me, let me clarify. In establishing the scene, your group is effectively charging at this larger formation of Saxons. Um, and by your group, I mean everybody under Amig's control. You probably, there's probably a group of like, I don't know, I sure a few hundred, like a couple hundred. I just want to clarify if, if we, like, stumble across them and we're just on horseback, or if our opening attack is a charge. Yeah, your opening attack is a charge. Your okay. subsequent attacks will not be a charge, but you will still be mounted for, essentially, melee. Okay. So if you choose to charge, this is the time to do it on the first yeah, attack. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. Okay. I'll go ahead, but first I'll go ahead and roll my, um... Hatred of Saxon's my, Passion? Yep. Which will be... A success, so you'll have plus ten. Mm -hmm. And then, um, my I've got the wrong screen up over there. Um, uh, it, s check oh, your hatred of Saxons if you haven't already. Obviously, um, I don't know how that's gonna get higher. It's already checked. Um, <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> it's, it's checked from the feast. Remember the whole. <laughs> no, I don't. But oh. Anyway, please continue. I'm interrupting. There, there was basically did someone say Saxons. Oh, that, that part in the fish. That 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 sounds right. Um. Oh, it's because uh, you guys were gonna go fight the Cornish instead of the Saxons, and that's how the com the topic of conversation came up. Well, no, no, I drew a card that had to do with pick your highest. Oh, passion. that's right, it was. Yeah, <laughs> your highest passion, the the thing you were most passionate about. Anyways, please, please. Um. Plus 10, plus 5, you're looking at a plus 15 to a minus 5. Uh, and because you are charging one of them, uh, that one will be an opposed roll, but the other one will have an unopposed roll at minus 5 to your plus 5. Well, the, actually, yep. so, no. So you're remember, you're attack, for granted, this is quite a bit of an abstract, but here's what will happen. You're going to charge at one of them with your full bonuses and, and everything, making it a, stra a standard uh, opposed skill roll. The other one will make his attack, but he will have the minus five penalty because he, is, uh, he doesn't have a great spear, which is okay. the only way to counteract somebody on horse and not have that penalty. So if I'm, if I'm charging, yes. just so I can clarify, there, I get the plus ten from the... the I've got a plus 15 on top of what I've already got, correct? Yes. 
Okay, so I think what I'd like to do is essentially I'm putting that would give me a 30. Uh, so real fast, I'm sorry. I, I know I'm interrupting here, but I'm rolling your... Well, this one passion will last one round for you. Sorry, please. Uh, you oh, I, thought I, rolled for myself. Oh, well, anyway. I mean, if you want to, because my one roll here was shitty. Yeah, I appreciate you. <laughs> Watch me roll a one, too. That'd be hilarious. I'm going to laugh. No, you got a four. Okay. I'll take it. Of course um, you will. Yeah. Um, so what I'd like to do on the charge, then, is it is it possible to essentially split my attack between the two? Like maybe try, like I'm trying to hit either trample both of them or I'm trying to use my shield to keep the one from... Because, you know, you can split rolls when you're on foot. Can you do it in a charge? Is what I'm, uh, I'm going to say no with the... Okay. With the addendum of, if I remember to look it up later, we'll see if that's an option or not. I have a nap well, flying in my face. What the fuck? Well, then I'm I'm rolling on a thirty to hit, so I hit him. It's just a matter of how hard. And if I get a twenty, it's it's a crit. Well, I also will be making a roll, adding minus five. So, so you have six plus fifteen is twenty one. I'm probably not going to come even close. I have an eight. I'm rolling. Uh, what is his axe? His axe is 15, so that's a 10, so that's a success, but yours is higher. Yeah, you do damage. Roll your horse damage. And my horse damage, just to confirm, is... I believe the 6. same as my regular attack, 66. Yeah. Now, does it, you get a bonus on damage for the charge? No. Just the you, you just use your horse... Charge? Yeah, you just use your horse, horse damage. Okay. So I don't get really any extra damage out of the charge anymore because I hit so hard. That's weird. Yes, because you've gotten bigger arm muscles. This makes me slightly sad. Well, you went and worked out a lot. All right, 22 minus his armor, which is 10 with his shield because he did have a success. That is minus 16. That wait, wait, means... did you take the minus 5 when you said he had a success? I did. He has a, because their axe skill is 15, and I, so I needed a 10, and I rolled an 8. Uh, let me see which, this is you, so I'm going to take oh, this you guy. you needed a 10, and you rolled an 8, so that would put it like 3 above, wouldn't it? No, no, no. He had, they start with axe 15, minus the 5 is 10, I rolled an 8, which is still a success. Okay, okay, I see. Uh, you did 22 damage, minus 10, oh, 10 with the shield. Okay, so 22, that's 12 uh, he is not knocked down or major damage. 30 minus 12 is 18, and he is still in the fight. The other guy will now make his unopposed minus 5 attack roll on you. Again, rolling against a 10, and he failed. That will take it to Sir Dallin. Who is this one over here? Sir Dallin, would you, I'm assuming you're making your charge, or are you just going to run up into the fray? Charging. Okay. Do you would you like to roll for passions? Mm. Can you can you drop me to a D three somewhere so we can keep track? Yeah, I, I meant to do that, but we're good now. I'm gonna, I'm like, do I get to? Do, should I be rolling hate Saxons or what? Do you have hatred of Saxons? Yes, I have hate Saxons. We all do. Mine just started at an eleven. Okay. Uh -huh. I would. I'm not gonna tell you you have to do this because, for one, your hatred of pass. Uh, excuse me, hatred of Saxons is below sixteen, whereas Revs is above. So I would have been like, if you're not rolling hatred of Saxons first, you're that's what you're doing. Like you don't have a choice. These are Saxons. You hate them this much. You have to do it. You. For Sir Dallin, his hatred of Saxons isn't nearly so bad, so if you want, you can choose a different passion, i.e. one of those that are at, like, 15 or 16. Um, well, it's totally... Mm, I would totally feel use Fealty Lord at my 17, then. Uh, and that's your base one for Roderick, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, roll that one. It's at 17, so you kind of have to. 
that's just not nearly as potent as the hatred of Saxons at 2742. Whatever it is. Okay, so... <laughs> it's, against it's, the 17. It's, it's 29. Mm, I re- I, I, yeah, re-roll you're going to want to use a reroll token? Reroll token. Yep, I see it. 16. That's so much better. All right, so you have a plus ten. Yeah, you have a plus for a second, ten. I thought your passion was fifteen, and I and I, I puckered for a second. Uh, roll one d six for me, real quick, please, to see how long your passion lasts. Six, impressive. Lance skill. Yep, you use your lance, and if it hits, uh, but first, um, uh, first before you, yeah, that's gonna hit. What is your lance skill? Ten. Uh, that actually did not hit. However, let me back up. Yeah, I, I, I was getting there. I was going to walk it through. So you have a 10. You have plus 10 for your passion and plus 5 for being mounted. So that's a total of 25. You succeed. I have a minus 5. I fail. So he is going to take full damage, no shield. So go ahead and roll your horse's damage. 66 rodents. Yeah, if you're using the standard charger, it's 6. And so he will take 15 damage. I believe his armor is f- uh, 4. Yep, 4. Uh, so 19 minus 4 is 15. Major wound is 14. All right. Well, first things first, we need to apply this damage. So 30 minus 15 is 15. Uh, he takes a major wound. So his first thing he needs to do is roll dexterity. For some stupid reason, I did not put dexterity in here, or I just don't see it. I don't see it. Um, I think... Give me half a second here, guys. Let me look this up. It won't take half a second. Uh, Appendix 1. I want Appendix 2. Saxon Warrior. Dexterity 8. I need to roll below an 8. Or he's going to fall over. And he falls over. And now I need to roll Valor to stay in the fight, which is a 12. He is still in the fight, but he is knocked down. The other Saxon next to him will be make, rolling on a 10 to hit you with its axe. That includes the minus 5. That is unopposed, so it'll hit. And he has, I think, 5d6 damage? Yep, 5d6. Just out of curiosity, nine. Split our. Good. If if we chose to split our attacks during attack, can we attack one offensively and the other defensively? Is that something we can do, or does it have to be both offensive or both defensive? When it comes to defensive, you don't do any damage against them. You're just yeah. Isn't that yeah? That's when you're defensively fight. You can yeah. So you can really only defensive fight or fight normal. Uh, okay. in that regard. Uh, I didn't, I didn't know if when you were splitting your dice between the two of them, if you could choose to go defensive with one and offensive with the other. That's one I would have to verify, but in my head, that, that doesn't make sense that you would be able to do that. Okay. Um, Rodance, my friend, you take nine points of... Da- oh, no, no, I'm sorry. Fourteen points of damage minus your armor, but not your shield. Your armor should be ten, if I'm not mistaken. Right. Let me double check my sheet. Yeah. So effectively, just standard. So yeah. Yeah. Just standard. You don't get your shield standard. bonus then. So basically, what happens is you charge in and basically uh, you smack this dude pretty good with the lance. Your horse knocks his ass over because he took such a relatively big hit. Uh, his partner next to him gets effectively a free shot as you're passing by, and he manages. A, you know, you could place the wound on your body wherever you like. Uh, but I'm thinking like you know something like leg thigh, something. You said nine, right? Yeah, nine damage because it was fourteen minus. No, I'm sorry, fourteen damage minus ten, so it's four damage. Uh, uh, it's on the shin. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Took an arrow to the knee. <laughs> there you go. Oh, there you go. Hey. All right, that takes us to Sir. Oh, let me drop. Let me drop this one down. That takes us to Sir uh, Vidimar. Not a perfect night. 
Uh, you are mounted. You may make this one charge this one time. Uh, you can call upon passions. What would you like to do? Uh, I'm gonna do Lord. Loyalty Lord. Uh, fifteen. Yeah. All right. Roll your fifteen. Don't fuck it up. Lord. Oh, you critted. All right, so you get a plus 20. Go ahead and check Loyalty Lord if you have not already. And increase <laughs> and increase your Loyalty Lord by 1 to 16. Uh, Did you get all wait, that? You got three things you got to do. Wait, wait. Hold on, yeah, wait, wait, wait. wait. So, so check it if you haven't already. Okay. okay. Now increase it by 1. All right. That's and the third thing. Uh, you did it already. You rolled the 1d6 to yeah. see how long your passion lasts. Uh, so you will be rolling your lance skill plus 25. <laughs> this guy is pretty well fucked. He might be able to get his shield up in time, but it won't fucking matter. Uh, my lance is 10 plus 18. So yeah, well, yeah, you're going to add 15 to the die roll, which makes it 33 Damn. against this dude's 3. <laughs> so he will get his shield up. All right. Are you rolling? Are is Vidimar riding the charger, or is he riding the courser? He's he's riding a charger. He's not on a courser. Okay, so you get the full sixty six damage then. Yeah. Minus uh. Ten. The the minus ten was my armor. Not not anything to do with you. Twenty six. He takes sixteen damage. That is going to be a problem for this young Saxon warrior here. So first things I'm going to do is I'm going to reduce his armor or his hit points to that. And then he takes, oh, he rolled a, you rolled a 16. So he's got to make a knockdown anyways. That will be against a dex of eight. And even if he survives that knockdown, he still has another one to make because he also took major wound. So first that. He failed that, so he's knocked down regardless at this point. So 12 damage isn't a wound on the one that I hit. Just curious because you... Uh, major wound is 14. Knockdown is 16. Okay. Just... No worries. Uh, and then 12, actually, the, the 112 I'm rolling against is his valor. Because he took a major wound, he needs to see if he stays in the fight. And he will be fleeing once he is able to get up. But he's currently knocked down. He is currently knocked down, which will give him an additional minus five in the next round of combat. Okay. Uh, your second opponent there, though, will now get a... Hold on. Uh, minus five on his attack roll, so he needs to roll a ten or better. Unopposed. Or excuse me, ten or under. He misses, yep. so you are good to go. And that will take us back to uh, Sir Everhart. Who still has two enemy Saxons in his face now. But he is mounted. Okay. Um, so right I'm now... Draw, I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm going to draw my sword. Uh-huh. Um, I think with my bonuses, that should give me a 30. What's your sword skill? 15. Yeah, you're at 30. So you can divide 30 up even... Or divide 30 up however you want between the two. Okay. Um I think um eighteen on one and, and, and twelve on the other. Okay. So Which one is gonna take the eighteen? The one that's already been hit or the, the buddy? Yes. Yes, the one that's already been hit will take the eighteen. Okay. I am rolling he is rolling against a 10. So please make your attack roll. And you get the damage and I get a shield. Make your uh your I I know there's a no distinction because they're the same but you're rolling your damage not your horse. Right. 66. 21 minus 10 is 11. That takes him down to unconscious. 
I need to actually make an unconscious roll, which means, if I'm not mistaken, I gotta roll 1d20 under his current hit points, which is 7. Nope, he is knocked out. So you... Uh, yeah. He is, for the time being, out of the fight. I'm gonna set him here. He is not yet dead. Uh, your second opponent, you're rolling against a 12, you said? With your plus, or no, that is your total bonuses. Uh, go ahead and make your attack roll. I am rolling against a 10. And I missed. Okay, and I'm rolling against a, I said 12? Yeah, because the other one was 18. Yeah. And we also, we both miss, so that will be it for you for this round. Um, are you going to use a reroll? I'm, I'm debating a reroll token. I think I will use it. Okay. Make your roll. That is a fumble. Your sword breaks. Oh. You're, in fact, here's what happens. You, uh, basically, you dispatch the other guy. When you strike him, and you cut through various lever, or excuse me, various layers of leather and padding and whatever else he's got. Uh, you don't notice this, but it chips your sword. So when you swing to hit the other guy, it catches on his shield, even though he failed his roll, uh, and it actually causes your shield, your sword to snap in half. What I need for you to do is make a squire roll to see if your squire can get another sword in your hand between now and the start of the next round. Um, but that's that's fine. I have something else in mind for the next round. Okay. So, are you? Do you need to make a squire roll to get a weapon in hand? Well, I'm assuming that I can carry more than one weapon on my horse. Well, I feel like you would have your sword on your hip. You might have, I don't know. I guess in your case, an okay. axe okay, attached fine. to your I'll, saddle. I'll... Yeah. So I would I would essentially be. Um, if you want me to make a squirrel for it, what I'm what I'm looking for is my two-handed axe. Okay. Uh, do keep in mind mounted and two-handed weapons. Okay. You'll have to get on ground, but you're down to one opponent, so it really doesn't matter in that regard. You still have, and you well, still I'm have your passions sure and stuff. Pretty sure it's seventy-six once I get that two-handed axe in my hand. It is. But that will be the end of your round, and so now I'm going to drop your counter down to do two. Do you want me to make a squirrel for that? Yes, idea? please, please. Okay, what is my... I'm not sure what my... Uh, is. we'll just use his age. Okay, so rolling a 19. Yeah, don't roll a 20 again. And yes, I said that on purpose. <laughs> just, just to see if the jinx was true. Alright, so by the time you are back into... You know, by the time it comes back around to you, uh, your squire will have been like, Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit! And manages to get your favored two-handed axe into your possession. Sir Dallin! What would you like to do? You have, uh, you've got one dude knocked down, and you have the other dude standing freely. Uh, you have a total of fifteen on top of your normal sword skill, which I believe is also fifteen, but I may be wrong. No, eleven. Eleven. Okay. So you have a total of twenty-six points that you can divide between the two. Is there any bonus for attacking someone who's downed? Uh, oh, that's actually a really good question. I believe you have, so he will have a minus five penalty on top of the minus five for being low ground, uh, because he's knocked down until he manages to stand up. So if your attack doesn't knock him down again, he will be standing up on the next round. Does that make sense? Okay. So but this round, so this round, he will have a total of minus 10 to hit you. So I could say 10, 11 to him, 15 to the other person? Sure. Cool. 11 to the dude on the ground, 15 to the person standing. Alright, which one are you swinging on first? The dude on the ground, of course. Alright, he will have a... I'm rolling against a 5. Make your attack roll, please. I failed. And I think you failed as well. No, you said what? 11 against the guy on the ground, so we both miss. Okay. And then I roll against the uh, other person. Which I have a 10 for this one. 16. Yep. I succeeded. You also failed. 
I believe. Can I reroll that one? Absolutely. I believe that is still a failure. No, I said 16. Or... I thought you no, said 11 15. or 15. Yeah, 15. Darn. I yep. was thinking about the 16, 10. You spend the whole time, this combat round, effectively... Between you and the two uh, Saxons, the one manages to get back up to his feet, but in the you know in the process, he's fending off your sword strikes and your horse bumping into him and all that. Uh, the other guy is in there swinging with his axe, screaming the Saxon version of profanities at you. Uh, manages to get a couple of good hits in, but nothing that registers as a hit, and uh, that will be the end of that round for. You. I'm going to drop your turn marker down to four for your passion. Sir Vidamar, how shall you avail yourself in this fight? You have one dude that is knocked down. He will be fleeing if he makes it to his feet at the end of this round. The other one is completely untouched and angry that his second cousin twice removed was knocked over. <laughs> well, Vidamar dismounts. You're going to dismount into this fray. You're going to surrender a free plus five to you, minus five to your opponents. Yeah. Are you sure you want to do that? Yeah. I realize yeah. you have your twenty plus, you know, plus 20 on your passions, but I'm questioning the tactical wisdom in that move. He's just dismounting. Okay. okay. You're on foot. Your horse runs off once it realizes there's nobody on its back. It takes off. Um, you have your sword skill plus 20 at this point. Uh, what is my sword skill? I believe it's 15, but I, I'm making shit up at this point. Yeah, it's 15. It's 15 plus 20, right? Uh, is it? Plus the bonus, right? Yeah, plus 20 for your critical, yeah, yeah. uh, passion right, roll. so he's gonna coup de gras the one on the ground, essentially, with 20, and then the other one, 15. Okay. Yeah. Roll your 20 guy first. I have a... Let me see. He's knocked down, so that's minus 5. You're no longer elevated, so still minus 5. Get off of my roller. Get out of here. Uh, so, yeah, he's just going to have the... I'm still rolling against a 10. So, go ahead and make your roll. Is it, I'm, I'm hitting the guy that's knocked down first. Correct. I succeeded. So did I. You rolled on my roller. Roll yours. Ah. Uh... So really such a difference. No, is that but... Even mine? Which one is mine? Anyway? Doesn't matter. It's fine. Uh, he will have his shield, so you get to do your your personal I'm, damage. I'm attacking the one that's knocked, though. Yeah, yeah. Okay, just checking. And 66 is my damage. <clears throat> Jesus, Vidamar actually got some muscle on his arms, huh? Yeah. 25 damage minus his 10, so that's 15 damage. That uh, straight out kills him. Yep. Uh, let me update his stuff. He is DEA dead. <sighs> and you can take him for your kill credit. All right, yeah, the I'm other one, what are you rolling against him? A 15? 15. Oops. All right, he has, he has his 15 as well. Dang you failed. Re You're using reroll, okay? Still failed. So I will be doing. Uh, so actually, I think what happens is as you're fucking around trying to kill the other guy and make sure he's dead, dead, he gets a you know effectively a flanking shot or even into your rear arc and does five d six damage to you. So let's roll that. Uh, Vidimar takes twenty damage. Uh, minus his armor only, which is 10. So Vidimar takes a 10-point wound. Mm. How fun. And do oh. I happen to have a dismounted Vidimar? Uh... You might as well or... Oh, here we go. You might as well fish out your dismounted uh, Everheart while you're in there. Um, give me one second. Oh, I got too many windows open here, so scale them down just a little bit. From an axe, right? What? Yeah. From an axe, okay. Yep. Uh, put you in here like that. Take this guy out of here. And you, well, 
Uh, actually, yeah, that is it. That's it for your turn. So I'm going to change your turn marker to a four. And that does take us to Sir Everhart. Are you dismounting as well? I am leaping off my horse with a battle cry of Pro Motui, and, um, which is for the dead in Latin. And, um, that, that scans. And um, swing in my big two-handed chopper. Okay, give me... 30 to hit. Now, can I split it between mine and one of the others, or would that be like a whole turn to move over and assist one of the others? Um, there is some separation on the battlefield at this point, and I do have one other thing I need to add to what is going on here, so give me just a moment uh, as I fix the visual representations. Uh, apparently you guys are still much larger than the Saxons, but whatever. Uh, that is the one remaining for... Sir Vidimar, this is the one remaining for Sir, what's his face, Everhart. Everhart. And lastly, we have, if I can find the correct figure, yeah, that would be this guy. Uh, yep. Uh, where? It, God damn it! It's that tiny little dot on the screen. <laughs> uh, so. Yeah, as you guys are, at, well, especially Everhart, as you are dismounting, you hear a fierce roar, war cry coming from the, the towards the back of the Saxon ranks, and there is what appears to be the Saxon chieftain of said local group barging forward, and he is, I'm going to roll, no, I'm not, I'm, well, I am going to roll, so give me one second here. Uh, even is even as Talos, odd is Everhart. <laughs> Great. Uh, so even as Talos, and I rolled a one. That means Sir Everhart is taking the Saxon as well as the other, not chief. Okay. And it is your turn, Mister. I have two hands on my one axe. Okay. Well, I am going to. And you have a plus, you have plus ten from your passion, and I believe that is all you have right now. I gotta let the right. dog in. Be right back. All right. So, so I'm essentially at twenty five. So. Yeah. Yes, you are. One d twenty plus five. Ten to one and fifteen to the other. Which one's getting what? Um. Ten to the one in front of me, and um, sorry, fifteen to the one in front of me. And um, ten to the to the thing. Okay. All right. Fifteen. Yeah, Saxon chieftain, Saxon thane, thane. whatever. Same right. difference. Uh, I sorry, my short term memory sucks right now. I'm gonna roll my uh axe of fifteen because that guy is still fresh. I rolled a one, but you will probably beat me. So, and you do. So make your sixty six. I will have my shield. It's it's seven plus two, I believe, because it's one d six above. Fuck so yes, because you have your two handed axe. Because you're not a Saxon. Twenty five minus my. God damn it. So seventeen. That takes him down to thirteen. That is first a knockdown roll and then a major wound. So first knockdown. He is knocked down. Needed an eight. So he is knocked down. Uh, because he took a major wound, I need to see if he's still in the fight, which is a Valor 12. He succeeds. He is still in the fight. Uh, now the Saxon Chieftain is roaring furiously. Uh, he has... Let me see what he's got. Axe of 21. Good luck. Jesus Christ. I succeeded. Do you succeed better? I don't think that's possible on a on a ten. What did you would you assign to him? Ten. Ten. That's a fail. Yep. Uh, you are going to take some damage, my friend. Uh, you are going to take sixty six damage minus your armor for a total of thirteen damage. He wallops you good. Now, my next question, 
I'm gonna go and see how up to date your character sheet is. Your knockdown is 15 because your size is 15. That sounds right. Okay. Well, in that case, you just took a major wound. Actually, your constitution is 12, which means your major wound is 12, and you took 13 points of damage. And I just realized I've been doing some of the knockdown figuring a little bit wrong. So, but we'll continue. Because I don't, I don't think it'll make too much difference at this point. So the first thing I need you to do is, uh, I thought we, I thought, go ahead. Your wound based off your total health is how we've been calculating it before. Like, so, time. so here's where I've been fucking up. The total damage before the armor is figured in is what gets applied against your knockdown, because it's the total force of the attack. Your damage received, which is the damage I rolled minus your armor is applied against your major wound. You took 13 points of damage because your armor absorbed 10. Does that make sense so far? Yeah, it just feels like the rules are changing every combat, and it's kind of hard to keep up. I apologize for that. Uh, I did screw up with the whole knockdown part of the rules tonight uh, because I've been using the damage that was applied and not the damage that was rolled for knockdowns. Um... Which is on me, because I totally bollocks that. Um, you have taken a major wound, though, because 13 is definitely bigger than 12. Uh, so the first thing I need you to do is roll a... Let me double check that. I, I know what I've been doing for my guys, but I've been doing the NPCs a little bit differently. Because they don't have some of the... They don't have that um, ability loss thing to factor in right away. Uh, I'm going to... Four? Where's, where's which chapter's combat? It's four? No, nope, four skills. Five is mechanics. Six is combat, which is 135. Uh, 149 is wounds. Alright, major wound. Check chirurgery needed. Wow, I really have been doing that wrong. Uh, your character falls unconscious unless he makes a successful 1d20 roll against your current hit points. Uh, which what? shouldn't be too hard. Yeah, that's, that's, that's new. Yeah, because I wasn't doing that before. I was doing. I was having them roll knockdown. You didn't do it against. The, you didn't yeah, do it against hold on. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. Because I, hold on. Let me look through this really fast. I know I did something different. Oh, it was the attributes. So I had them roll to see if they were knocked down. When what I should have been doing was rolling to see if they were knocked out. All right, roll knockdown. Uh, roll dexterity. And if you fail the roll, you're just you're knocked down onto the ground. Three. All right, you're good. Next, you need to roll. This is the one I haven't been doing for the NPCs because it doesn't matter as much. Take the five dot three. Uh, one more page. Uh, roll one d six for me. This is uh the, which attribute is lost. Or takes a one point loss, I should say. Fortunately for you, a six is no loss. And lastly, roll Valor. Which is one of your traits. Mm -hmm. And effectively, if you fail, you succeeded, so it's not important. Uh, which this basically means that you're able to continue in the fight. So you're still standing. Uh, you're hurt. You're still engaged in the fight. I think that completes your turn. Yep. Uh, rotational value set it to one, and now we go to <clears throat> Sir Dallin. Now, where, what about the other? The, you did both. The other guy that I was fighting stand. 
What do you mean? Uh, these you've got this. Hold on. He's he's not is he knocked down? Major wounded? I'm I'm a little confused just to because I hit him about as hard as I got hit. Yeah, no, he is he's knocked down, but he made his valor roll, which I believe was that eleven that's on the screen uh, in the the text box for TTS. That eleven right at the top there. Uh, I believe that was the 11 for the 12. Because if he was knocked down and out of the fight, I would have put Flea next to his knock when you mouse over him. Uh, Sir Dallin, you have currently a plus 15 bonus. Are you dismounting or are you staying on horse? Uh, I prefer high ground bonus. Thank you very much. Indeed, I agree. So I took a wound of how much, just to confirm? Uh... Thirteen. Okay. Cool. Is the one I knocked down still on the ground or did I get up? Um. He's at. Nope. I, yeah, you're right. Good call. He is up because nothing happened to him in that last round because I believe you failed your attack rolls. Okay. Um. 26 total. 16 going to the damaged one. 10 going to the one standing up. Okay. I have... 16 to the damaged one first. Alright, I am at a minus 5, and I failed. I hit. You hit. Roll your damage, please. I have this a feeling... This is my personal strength? Yes. 13. Minus 4 is 9. That will take him down to... 15... Land. Yeah, what's 15 minus 9? My brain's not working. 6. Uh, which is below his unconscious value and effectively takes him out of the fight. And now we have the other one. I believe you said a 10. <clears throat> Excuse me, my squire takes him captured. Sure. That works. Uh, let me... Let me... Bounties on peons may not be great, but it's still like a Libra. But it's still a bounty. <laughs> yeah. To be fair. Uh, and then... I didn't finish mine off either, so. Indeed, you well, have I'm, not. I'm, I'm having my person pull him off. <laughs> you him up so he survives. Then we can uh, him later. Okay, let's. Before we forget, go ahead and have your squire make their first aid roll. Should I do the same? Are, are you intending to do basically the same thing? Yeah. Yes, please. So, um, do you want me to roll my squire check or my first aid, my squire's first aid? Your squire's. Because they have first aid. It is your squire's first aid. Okay, I've put a point in it, so my squire's first aid is seven. Okay. I thought you said just roll your squire's age is what I thought we were doing. That is... They have individual the... notes. Yeah, they, ha they have... specific skills. Yeah. yeah. So earlier, Rev, when I had your squire bring your weapon, that was just a normal squire roll against their age. They do have, as Rodant said, their own first aid score. So I need you to roll against that. Uh, Four Rodance's captured... Knucklehead, he is still injured. He, your squire is unable to uh, effectuate anything. Yeah. Um. So your squire, squire check is for basic squire duties, like prepping your horse, okay. grabbing your weapon, stuff like that. Then they have specific named skills for where specific named skills might be used, and you have the option of training them in whatever sp specific knight skills you would like them to have. So, yes. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if I basically could get, I'm sorry. When they become a knight, their special trained skills that we gave them basically get tacked on top of the standard profile for a knight, I think. And Something like that, yeah. It is for going through a full squireship. Yep. So. Um, Rev, if you could roll your squire's first aid roll real fast for it's me. Like got on Discord or in the family trees, because that was something I couldn't find when I was going to look up. Uh, the time. base, would you say the base was six? Six. Yeah. Unless you've changed it, it's a six. Yeah. Well. It's a default on your sheet. You're supposed to fill that squire block in. The default skills for squire is... Uh, by default, everyone's squire has first aid six, battle one, horsemanship six, and then one other skill starting out of five. I personally chose flirting for my ridiculous squire. <laughs> the one that you told specifically don't flirt. <laughs> yeah, the one that I told to keep her uh, pants on because she was a baby at 18. 
Yeah. Well, no. um, my saved rolls that I have yet to apply is Squire skills plus, um, eight. So. Wait, run that by me one more time. I I missed something there. Before, when I was supposed to look it up, which I'm not sure where it is. Uh huh. Um. We went ahead and did some cumulative rolls for what I should have added to my squire skills over the three years. Okay. It ended, up, ended up being eight. I just haven't applied them yet. Gotcha. Okay. I will allow an eight on the, in this case. So if you could roll against that for me. Well, I already rolled an eleven, so I failed. Well, that eleven was against the wrong target number. I'm allowing you to re-roll for free. Okay. Yeah, because realistically, That's you would fail. I tried. They get, couple, <laughs> they get a couple skill points every time they level. Two. Yeah, they get a one d three. It's one d three. Your squires, your spouses, and other yeah, NPCs of note. The three d three was for three years, and I got an eight total or something like that. Yeah. All right. One, two, and two threes. Uh, back to Rodance for the second half of this combat round. Um, the other target for a point which, uh, was 10, and I'm also rolling against a 10, and I failed. <clears throat> and you failed as well. Uh, don't care. I knocked the other one out. That's all I was really going for. Yeah, you, I mean, you've leveled your, your, even the playing field, as it were, so. All right. Sir Vidimar, on foot, facing one opponent at the moment. That opponent is fresh. What are you doing? You have a plus 20, excuse me, to your attacks. That is... What is your sword skill? It's a 10, but isn't it increased with plus the valor? Or not the valor. See, it's, the, uh... I'm sorry. I gotta walk this through again in my head. Your sword skill is what again? 15. 15 plus 20 is 35, so it's actually rolling against a 1d20 plus 15. You're, you definitely succeeded. I don't think I can fucking... Unless I critical, Is which I, I just critical. They have an axe of 15, a critical oh, trumps a success. You will still have your shield. Wow. Uh, yeah. All right. Oops, wrong one. 66 minus 16. Uh, wow, I oh nope, I take that back. No. I need to roll I need no 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 I critical I was supposed to roll Oh fuck double damage thirty three minus sixteen is seventeen damage and it looks like you have taken a major wound as well. Damn. So one step at a time, your major wound, I need you to check chirurgery needed. How many hit points does that has that left you with? Uh, I mean, from the ten or nineteen, so nineteen minus whatever you just gave me. Oh shit! Uh, what did you give me? Uh, I just rolled thirty three damage. Minus, yeah, minus minus sixteen, which is seventeen. So two hit points left. Hopefully. Yeah, you need to roll a two or under. You're gonna be knocked out, bleeding profusely, with a an active Saxon in front of you. Oh my god. <laughs> I I meant this to be just a sim relatively simple skirmish. What is going on? Normally if you want it, oh, if you want yeah. it to be a relatively simple, simple Good. fight. It's what you said the last Why two times. Why are you throwing bosses at us for relatively simple fights? Exactly. <laughs> okay. Relatively simple fights within the first few years. Okay. Hold on. I'm thinking my way out of this one. Hold on. Um Your character is definitely knocked the fuck out. His squire snags his ass and runs away. Yeah, you're. That's literally. Yeah, roll <laughs> your. Mistake as <laughs> yeah, roll your squire, uh, age or less to see if your squire is able to get your body out of the way. Okay, so here's what happens. Your squire manages to run in. Uh, roll again. Uh, hold on, let me think. Roll your squire's. Does your squire have any sort of combat damage on him? Uh, no, just battle, it says. Uh, roll, roll against a 10. Unopposed. Roll your squire's damage, which I will allow to be 4d6 minus 
this dude's armor. That is nine points of damage that your squire is able to put on this Saxon, which doesn't affect him in any way. Um, other than, other than, yeah, yeah. So, and then he pulls your profusely bleeding body off of the field. Uh, so basically what he does is he manages to run in and I'm kind of thinking like this might be amusing and maybe a little too much, but I feel like he, your squire runs in and does some form of like a crossbody tackle and a quick stabbing motion with a, with a knife or something, uh, to get the Saxon off of you. And while the Saxon is confused and dismayed, uh, he manages to pull your body from the fight. Okay. Uh, and so you are unfortunately out of this, the rest of this fight. I love uh, how you always seem to roll crits on me. I, I listen. I it's it, the exact same thing that happened to Farvel. Uh, <laughs> listen, it's, even, go ahead. If you haven't rolled a crit on him, we're still in a uptight situation because of what you're throwing at us. Yeah. Um. Now, I'm gonna roll against a twelve. I'm gonna roll again. Against a 12. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, so I think what happened there was two of uh, Sir Amig's house knights rush in to even the odds a bit. And then instead of being able to knock either of these two weirdo Saxon normals out of the fight, they just kind of... They don't knock them out of the fight, but for you guys, they're not in the fight anymore. They have gotten them distracted off of you. So Rev, you will finish dealing with the Saxon Chieftain, and Sir Dallin will continue with the Saxon Warrior. These two are tangled up with some of Amig's boys, and not with you. Unless somebody wants to disagree with that decision. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> You're out of the fight. You don't really get much of a say at the moment. <laughs> Rev or Rodance? Are you okay with me lightening the load there by Amix boys rushing in? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of what would happen in the ebb and flow of combat. Yeah. I was really hoping to, like, I mean, the result is still the same. You know, you don't, you're not going to have to deal with them unless I make rolls later saying that Amix boys got fucked up and here they come back at you. Um,. Which would be kind of a dick move, but uh, I definitely need to rethink what my ideas of balancing with this game might be. Uh, on that note, Sir Everhart, you have an angry Saxon Thane swinging wildly with his axe. And one point left of passions. And one round of passions, so... Okay, so I'm I'm hitting him with... Um... I'm rolling a, 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 I guess a twenty-five. Uh, no. Did, no, it's just a plus ten. It's a plus ten. No, I'm looking at what I'm. I lost my character sheet for a second. Um, I'm rolling a. Um, sorry, I'm. I'm rolling a twenty-four. What's your? You have a a fourteen in axe. Mm -hmm. Okay, he has a twenty-one for his axe. And, and see, here here's my point with throwing the thanes at us. With my passions doing amazingly, I'm barely at the same level as he is without a passion. Yeah. Uh, effectively, what happens here is, is you're just going to have to roll higher than what he rolls. Um, that I, that 19, I'm not counting it because you were still talking when I, when I hit the button. So please, make your attack roll. Uh, bleh, make your attack roll when you're ready. Do you want to re-roll? Go for it. You have pretty good odds of getting better than a 12. Well, I have pretty good odds of getting better than a 3. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> That's your... it's a, it's a... So it's going to be my roll plus... Plus 4, yeah. Oof. Not quite. <sighs> um... Go for it, I'm listening. Make your argument. No. No. Alright. That's not bad at all, because we both succeeded, so you don't actually take any damage. 
Yeah, but my passions are up next round. Yes, Sorry, they are. Just, I'm, not, I'm not that upset. My leg just started cramping. Oh, I hate that. Uh, no, That's actually, it. I can delete this. Okay, Sir Dallin. It is you so, and this one Saxon dude. I'm ignoring the Saxon dude in front of me and charging the Thane and attempting to knock his ass over with my horse. So you're committing to a charge. Can you... Is that what you want to do? Is, is effectively you're going to commit to a charge? I have a... Uh, I, I, I have a I have a thought process here. Work with me for a second. Okay. Is that what you're going to commit to doing? I was going to ward her own dance about an unopposed attack if she had any damage. I couldn't remember if she was wounded or not. I think she took like uh, yeah. a couple points. I'm assuming I can't because I can't. I can charge at him, but I would be taking the unopposed attack that would just be soaked by my armor. So here's what I'm thinking and how to resolve this. And I will pitch this to you, and if you're cool with it, we can do it. Otherwise, you'll be still with your normal Saxon dude. I propose that if in order for you to effectively disengage with the Saxon to go after the Thane, I need you to pass a horsemanship roll. When you pass that horsemanship roll, you are still going to take an unopposed attack roll. Uh, but you will have the option of doing a charge against the Thane. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What happens if I fail the horsemanship check? You are locked in combat with the Saxon in front of you. And then I just proceed normal combat. Correct. Correct. Okay, cool. I can't uh, paddle the uh, um, horsemanship check uh, a la passion. What is your horsemanship? It's like a little 10 or an 11, but with a plus 10. That's, that I is. Auto wit, succeed. Yeah, that is correct. I have an 11. So I auto succeed the horseman. All right. Ship check. I'm to going go to make. Run it, dude. Yep, I'm going to make my unopposed. I fumbled. So please. Does the Saxon he struggle? Breaks, he breaks his short sword. Like he well, he has a, well, he has an axe. I think what happens is he tries to take an attack at you. And in the process of you rearing your horse to turn it around, he takes a hoof to the face, but it's it doesn't really hurt him necessarily, but it's enough to knock him on his ass. And therefore, you're able to break away and make your charge attack against the thing. So, yeah, Lance attack at plus 10 from Passion. Yeah. Make your attack roll. Now, if she's attacking him, does he now have to divide his dice between us? Uh, for this charge attack... It is unopposed because he is in combat with you. Okay. That is a success. Please roll your horse damage. That is 14 damage that he takes, which is Bro, not a good... A you do have a reroll, and it looks like you I'm have a... a reroll token in there. My last one. That's not a reroll token. <laughs> this I, I clever play... That. <laughs> this clever play, and you're like, fuck. 29. That is a much better roll. Okay. Oh. Alright, so first we have he needs to make a dexterity roll to stay standing. We're doing this correctly this time. Uh, well, I'm using his total damage taken at the moment. Uh, what? Correct. I just want to. I just want to know how much damage he took. Uh, at the moment, he, he's got sixteen with his shield, but because it's unopposed, he's only going to get ten. Okay. So he's, he takes nineteen damage. Yeah, he's going to be taking. Go ahead. I'm listening. I just want to know that he took nineteen ten. damage. That's all I was trying to figure. Yep. He has ten dexterity, so I got to roll against that. He's still standing, miraculously. Uh, so then he takes twenty nine, nineteen damage. That is a major wound for him. Uh, Let's see if he gets unconscious. Let me. Yep. I want to capture him. I know. Thirty-one minus nineteen is twenty-one. That sounds like twelve. Uh, somebody check my math, please. Twelve plus nineteen sounds like wow. it's going to be thirty-one. Yeah, twelve plus nineteen is thirty-one. Okay. Uh, that is. Uh, we just checked not. Uh. Knocked down. I have to roll against that 12 to stay awake. He's unconscious. Uh, yep. Uh, he is unconscious, and the rest of it 
I'll roll a 12. Uh, wait, what is his valor? I don't, because I don't think his valor is the same. Uh, his valor is 17. So let me roll against that real quick. Uh, ooh! If he were awake, he would not be willing to stay in this fight. But is immaterial. Uh, is your. Are you going to capture him, or is your squire going to come out and grab his body? Um, squire duties, bro. Squire duties. Make your squire roll. Are you making my 19-year-old squire roll her check? Yep. Or excuse me, uh, my squire is... Let me double check that. 19, I was going to say, 19 sounds a little high. Yeah, my 18-year-old squire is running out and grabbing a body as per her squirely duties. Yep. Cool. Successful. I a body. So you've <gasps> got... I didn't get to the stack of bounties! I'll yep. play that one with you, Rev. <laughs> Rev is like, please thank you, God. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah. And that is why I'm on a horse. Yeah. All right. That takes us to... That'll take... that was my third of six rolls with Pessions. Yeah. Um, that takes the fight back to Sir Everhart. I'm going after the one remaining that she... The one that she ditched? Yep. All right. Uh, he has regathered I... his senses and taken it back to foot. He has got an axe of 15. You've got... My uh, Saxons has, has ended. Yes. Um, um, May I suggest... Uh, Okay. I know it's a little low, but is definitely called for here. The brother of or the Brotherhood of Med Dead Men or whatever it is, uh, because Vidimar has been taken out of the fight. Okay. It is an option, but it is he a valid did, one. He did look cute, so I was gonna roll hatred of magical creatures. <laughs> um. Wow. That's not that's not gonna fly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just wanted to be weird. Y um, you did it. Okay, you're welcome. Um, I was actually leaning, yeah, I guess. All right. I'm I'm doing loyalty for uh for dead men. Okay. What's it at? 10 or 11? Ten. Okay. It's 10 it's 10 and checked. And checked. Okay. I tell you what, I will call that a 10. Uh, one, two reasons. One, I feel like given the fact that you guys have just brought Vidimar into the fold, like officially, that, you're, that you might have some sort of inherent bonus on the role that may or may not necessarily be there mechanically. Uh, but also because I did goof some of the fight already and put perhaps arguably too much of a challenge before you so we will allow that passion that said i need you to roll 1d6 uh actually we're gonna do 1d3 because uh, i don't okay. think we're gonna i don't think we're gonna need to go that far to be honest with you but 1d3 to counter oh, some of the so you're, so you're saying i critical on my passion uh well it's already checked so so that would be two two rounds yep and I just set it to two. But, 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 but no, critical would mean it would go up by one automatically. That's also would mean it would be. It would, uh, be, a it would be a plus of twenty, not a plus of ten. It's, it's, uh, you know what? You know what? You know what? You've you've no, but you've made a semi-convincing argument, and I don't want people to misunderstand and think that I am not a beneficial or excuse me, what's the word I'm looking for here? A benevolent GM. So yes. You, we could do a little retroactive hand waving what? bullshit here and say that you can increase your uh, brotherhood, whatever the hell it is, to eleven. We're about to off his face. Yeah. So you can raise your brotherhood. You can you can raise your brotherhood of dead men to eleven. Keep the check, and now kick this dude in the face with your axe. Well, what I'm asking is, do I get a plus? Do I get a critical? You get the plus twenty. Okay, so I'm rolling at a at a plus thirty four or a thirty four total. Yeah, so that would be one d twenty plus fourteen versus my need of fifteen, and I failed. So I think he's about to get splatted. 
Yep, he's splatted. <clears throat> Roll your 7 plus 2. 76 that plus 2 damage, that is. I was going to say, 7 plus 2 almost seems like some sort of strange am ammo counting. It's like, yeah, this, you know, 7, <laughs> you know, get seven plus 1. It's like, yeah, this one's 7 plus 2. What? Yeah, no, 76 plus 2. And you are out of... Yeah, you are out of tokens, too, if I'm not mistaken. So that's 21 damage. I'll be right back. Okay. Dogs are barking at something. Okay. Uh, he reduces that by 4 to 17. So that is going to be... Well, first off, that's a knockdown check. So let's check his dexterity of 8. Oops. That is a fail. So he is... Uh, first, 30 minus... Uh, got 21 minus 4 is 17, 31 minus 13 points remaining. Uh, he has taken, so first he's, oh yeah, knocked down. And then 17 damage is more than a major wound. I got to roll a 13 or, or lower to stay awake. He is awake. Uh, and then a 12 or lower to stay in the fight. He is not staying in the fight. Since I haven't used my... My squire has ineffectively been so far. Can I basically just have my squire run him down? Hmm. Let me think for a second here. I mean, it could be Rodance's kill. I just was going to say. Yeah, let's let Rodance... Uh... Well... I don't need kill glory. I'm collecting bounties. Thank you very much. I feel like Rodan is <clears throat> distracted with like checking the pockets of this thing. <laughs> <laughs> or, sorry. Rodan is sorry. exceptionally prudent and finds the usefulness of collecting bounties much more satisfying than the glory of turning in bodies. Um. So Sir Everhart is at the top of the order which now means that individual Saxon was supposed to be facing the both of you simultaneously. Although, you did break off to go run down the thing, so I guess uh, we could use the same argument. Bro, dance. I need Sir Dallin to make a horseman check, horsemanship check to get back into the engagement with the Saxon. You could run him down if you want. The fight does thought, seem to be breaking down. Well, if I thought she was saying she skipped her turn. But, uh, uh, well, I'm... you are at the top of the turn, and Dallin is second. Well, if so... he wants to go gank him, I am fine with that. I just am going to give him the side eye if he doesn't split me some kill glory after, you know, coming and taking it's, care it's, of It's saving his ass. <laughs> well, I mean, hey, what did I say that? <laughs> the, thing is already, the thing is already in your kill box, not mine, so. Um... Oh, I mean, if that's how that works, I figured we were splitting the glory and bounty of the thing since we were both fighting it. The bounty, well, you guys can split. The, the glory thing. for defeating the opponents is why you have two pieces under your name and one under Talos oh, yeah. and one under Rev. Um, yeah, you can have the other bit of glory then. I don't care. You mean bounty? No, no, he can go smack that last one. Oh, okay. So so for for all intents and purposes, you are done in, in the fight then. Is what I'm with hearing. Sort of a, with sort of a frustrated exhaustion of like, really, he's running. I pull my throwing axe off my belt. Well, hold on. My... Hold on. Um, I, and the only reason why I'm interrupting is is that's not what's happening. He is currently knocked down. Once he is no. standing again, he will be attempting to fight. So this is effectively another round now. I thought you said his valor, he, he lost his valor roll and would be... Oh, that would have been he, the thing. He did fail. He, well, no, this no this guy also failed his valor roll, so he is trying to get out of the fight as soon as he can. He just can't because he got knocked down. So <laughs> he will take a minus five penalty because of that knockdown. Uh, and he will fight this round uh, because he's trying to get to his feet. Okay, so he's got a minus five, and I've got a plus 20. I'm hitting him with the flat of my axe. So your damage is going to be uh, non-lethal, is what I'm hearing. Un unless I, like, critical him and smash his skull in. Fair enough. I actually, I will live with that. Uh, he needs to roll a 10 to do anything, but your success is probably going to be much higher. He failed anyway. Okay, so I'm rolling against, I have to basically get a 20 to, to, to completely crush his skull. 
Yes, and you damn near did, but not quite. You knock the fuck out of him. When you hit him, it's almost just, as if... I want to do it for the fun. I mean, oh, just to see what... Stuff. Yeah, well, it, yeah, it won't matter because he's going to take 29. 25 of that. And that would kill him if it were non-lethal. So, uh, at this point, he is definitely knocked, as they say, the fuck out. Uh, but he is not knocked down, technically. Um, he's, just, he's just completely unconscious. Yeah, he's completely up. unconscious and he's about to be captured. Uh, I think what happens is you're like, really? You're knocked down. You're thinking about fleeing. I can see it on your face. And you just wallop. And I don't use that word often because of how silly it is. But you wallop the bejesus out of him with your axe. And I get it. Let me hit him with the like. I don't even hit him with the axe head. Actually, I just hit him with the butt of it. So yeah, I, yeah, 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 yeah. You you know you catch him on the side of the you know, of the head, or you catch him with the butt of it, something like that. And it's almost as if before you even make physical contact, his eyes are already rolling up into the back of his head as he collapses in a heap of broken, bleeding body parts, but somehow still alive. Um, he is okay, captured. His arms are going in directions that aren't supposed to. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, he is definitely captured, um, and that completes the fight. That wasn't the fight you guys thought was going to be, but had hoped it would be, but then it wasn't because I threw too much at you. Rodance, do you want to deal with the other two Saxons? Or... Uh, th by the time you guys are done, they have already been... Actually, let me roll real fast, see what happens with these guys. Make a roll for it. I'm curious. Yeah. So I get bounty and kill credit for generic split bounty. Oh my god. <laughs> so just so just so you yeah just so you guys know what I just did, uh, I rolled against a basic fifteen sword for House Knights of Amig to finish these guys off. Those House Knights are dead. Amig has lost two of his House Knights. Um, let me see what this roll looks like. The ever loving fuck is wrong with those House Knights. Well, this guy. Is currently, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do this. Um, so I'm about to go mow another one down with the lance. Okay. Well, hold on. Let me see. Are either of these guys even injured? <laughs> uh, one of them is. Um, roll a twelve. Right answer above the table. Can oh. I take the injured one? Yeah. Okay. I'm at the advantage of running up to them with the lance, so I'll take the full heal, full health one. I'm assuming you got the, my old one already off the board. Yeah, I. This one, I oh yeah. With the axe. Oh shit! I that just fell. We. <laughs> uh, yeah, this guy should Where'd be. He's right here. See, this is part of the problem. Is um, once we all die the first time around, we'll be a lot more even. But until then, we're gonna be rolling at a much greater advantage to for Undertaker. Uh, Okay, this is what I am looking at. This guy, uh, Sir Everhart, you you are up first. He is attempting to flee. Uh, by the time, so basically, by the time you guys catch up to him, you see the dead, uh, the two knights that Amig had. Or I'm sorry, let me back up. The two house knights of Amig, they are dead, um, or at least you could assume they're dead because they're both on the ground, bleeding profusely. Armor is rent broken and bashed uh these two the one uh he said he's trying to flee. yeah he is a t he's like you could tell he's got he's been banged up he has been fucked up in the fight he barely made it through his own fight and now he's like i'm done i'm out of here uh so by the time you get there he's actually in the process of like collecting himself back up onto his feet and he looks like he's about to dash the other individual has taken significant uh amounts of damage comparatively speaking uh, but he is still very much in the fights, shouting profanities because he sees you coming. Okay. Um, well, Everhart, you are up first. Okay. Well, at this point, I'm almost kind of done with fighting. Like I've my my passions are spent. You're getting I'm, tired. I'm, I'm beat up. Yeah. Probably a little dinged up. Yeah. So, I'm drawing on my last reserves. And I'm thinking, I'm trying, I'm doing this for my family. I am saving, you know, this is this is basically sort of a cross between 
this is for Farvel, and uh, something like, I'm doing this to pr ensure these Saxon dogs don't hurt my family. You still have one round of your other passion. I had I had two. I just burned two rounds. I only had two. Oh, rounds. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Okay. Sorry. Please continue. So, I'm going to roll, I guess, if, if you'll allow it, love a family. Um, I'll allow it. I'll, I will. Damn. I will allow it because of the indirect connection to Farvel and thus to Vidimar. And how Vidimar is out of the fight, and you need to kind of do this to, um, I guess you could say acquit or help exonerate Vidimar in this fight. Well, Perhaps no, even revenge against. He's trying to keep parts of his wife's family alive. Yeah, yeah, family yeah. No, I uh, yeah, that makes sense. I think we've misunderstood. This is more like you've been. In combat, and I'm, I'm like above the table here. You, yeah. You've been in combat. You've you've been at that place where your your energy levels are expended. You oh yeah. Rather just go home, and you're digging deep. And you're like, I whatever it takes to get through this moment is what we need to do to get through this moment. Right. And and what I'm doing to dig deep is I'm reaching down and I'm thinking of my family. I'm thinking of, uh, <clears throat> um, Farwin. Yes. And I'm thinking this is for the people back home. Yes, because technically Farwin is your nephew as well. So yes, that definitely works. Uh, by all means, make your family passion roll. I will allow it. It's a 15. That is a success. You have plus 10. Roll 1d6 for me. Okay. Only one? I'm kidding. <sighs> you'll, I'm sure you'll be rolling more in a moment. Two. Yay. I don't think you're going to need all of them. Um, Rodance, uh, before we continue... Well, I'll, I'll get to you in a moment. <clears throat> I need to finish this part first. All right. So, you have plus 10 on your axe. This Saxon, he is... <clears throat> excuse me. Other than the fact he wants to get away, he has no further penalties. <clears throat> so, he will is be he rolling... Is he fleeing or is he fighting? He, he wants to flee... By the time you get there, but he is kind of, he's basically stuck. Okay. So he has to fight, but he doesn't have any penalties. So I'll be rolling okay. against a 15. <clears throat> and I failed. So this guy's probably fucked. That looks like a solid hit. <laughs> I'm not even going to do the math. Um, well, basically, the only, I was looking to see if I got a 20 to critical. That was really yeah. the only reason I rolled that. Yeah. Uh, make your 7 plus 2, I believe. Uh, he's dead. 32. <laughs> he's dead. <laughs> I'm not even going to call it dead. I'm just going to stick him. You're throwing him off the table. <laughs> I didn't mean to. Actually, I do need to mark that he's dead. He, yeah, you just fuck him up. You catch up to him on the scene. He's over there like, I just want to go home. I'm done to this shit. Kind of like you. He just didn't have that whole reserve of being able to call on his family. You come in. You basically gut him with your axe. Uh... How much is his total health? Uh, like zero. Injured. How much is oh total from start? Uh, it's actually thirty. Well, I basically did more than his total health, even if he wasn't wounded. So I basically just like cut him in two. Uh, well, he does have armor, so that would technically be a thirty-four that you would have to defeat to make that happen. Oh, okay. Never mind. Uh, I just yeah, but yeah, you definitely gut him. Like you run through all of his armor. You know, the, the bits of it that are still left. He's gutted at the very least. He's done. He's not ever getting up again. <clears throat> um, I can delete that. We don't need it anymore. Well, no, I take that back. Whatever. I spend my action, Surge. Uh, that is not a thing. That is not a thing. Uh, Sir Dallin, your opponent is not looking terrible. He's got some wounds. He's got some beat marks. Uh, but you are mounted. I'm wrong. 25 lance check. <sighs> well, he will be making a roll of 10. Yeah, I think... Yeah. I rolled a 6 on my passion. It's still running. This is the fourth roll I've had on it. Yeah. Uh, technically 5th, if we're counting the round I've skipped. I, we, we are. So this, this will be your last round here. That's what I was getting ready to talk about. And then I was like, no, let me finish Rev's last... Uh, or his his round. Yeah, so this is your Yeah, so this is your last round of that passion. However, I don't think you're going to need it. 
because you succeeded better than me. He will have his shield only because he succeeded. Uh, but you have horse damage coming at him. A 20. Uh, minus 16. It's only going to be 4 damage. Uh, do you have any tokens left? Nope. Okay. Alright, well, first it's 20 damage against his 16, so I got to roll dex, which is uh, 10, if I'm not mistaken. He's still standing. Uh, 20 damage minus 16 is only 4 damage. That takes him down to 13. Uh, 13 is not enough for unconscious, so he's still in the fight. You are mounted. You have a plus 5. He has a minus 5. Next round, before we begin that round, is there passions you might want to call on, or do you want to just smack this dude and be done with it? Wait, what about me? Oh, I'll think about it. That's actually a fair point. Yes. Uh, let me. All right. So I will ask this question to the two of you. Your passions, uh, Rev. Actually, I think you have one round left. I deleted I your thing by mistake. Uh, so you I do, do have passion. Uh, he, this guy. First off, this guy gets a minus five. All right. First off, he starts at fifteen acts. If you both are attacking him, he's going to put. He can put it all into me. I don't care. Well, I'm just trying to think because if I want to keep him alive, it's actually better to put all 15 on the horse in front of him and take the 10. So that's what he's going to do, which gives Rev an unopposed attack, which I don't like doing, but it basically gives Rev an unopposed attack roll. That I can't miss on because it's... Because you're fucking impassioned. <sighs> Shit. I don't even know why we had you roll that. Go ahead and roll your damage. To see if I got a critical. Yeah, really. That's about the only reason. 23. 25. Yep, 25. That is going to definitely be a knockdown check. He has a dex of 10. Or, excuse me, 8. He's good. No shield, just armor. Yeah. Uh, that... Uh, 23 minus 4 is 19. It's more hit points than his. That means he is dead. You know what? I should have done a whole lot more damage earlier to the guy who got a shield because axes are supposed to do a heck of a bunch of bonus damage. To you know what? You're absolutely right, and I totally forgot it too because a shield against an axe makes the shield 1d6 instead of 6 uh, armor. And Rev has stolen the kill from Sir Rodance. Or excuse me, Sir Dallin. That completes the combat. Is he unconscious or dead? Oh, he is dead dead. Oh. He had like 13 hit points and just ate 19 points of damage. He's dead dead. Uh, Where does that leave us? What do you guys want to do? You've got dead bodies everywhere. Uh, you've got so mangled what we're bodies. Doing is, so we're totaling up our notes and logging off for the evening because I think we're almost at the end of time, right? We are. I'm, I just wanted to make sure there was anything that you guys didn't want to touch on before we wrapped up. Vitamar is safe. Um, uh, like somebody is going to need, well, he had, he actually, actually, I'm sorry. Which of us has better first aid is what I was going to look into. Vidimar has chirurgery checked. I believe, um, uh, Everhart does as well. Yep. So you guys need, uh, oh God. Chirurgery being checked is a kind of a deal. If the chirurgery box, or excuse me, chirurgery needed box is checked, character's unhealthy, needs a physician's care. Um, from, taking a major wound. Uh, once a character is unhealthy and is needed, remains checked until I decide to remove it, normally after several weeks of rest. Uh, I think what we see is something of a montage of Rev. Basically, or excuse me, Everhart effectively collapsing on the battlefield from exertion. Uh, Squires, Sir Dallin, others will gather around him to police up his body to take it to what could otherwise be considered to be the medical tent nearby. Um, Vidimar is already there. Um, over the course of time, the group will make its way back to Sarum. Vidimar is unconscious for the majority of that trip. 
until he can get his hit points back up. Uh, I had half my health point, HP left. I collapsed. Okay. Well, you had, did you, but the, just to verify, you had chirurgery checked because you took that major wound. Am I right? Yeah, yeah. But you made your unconscious roll as part of that major wound check process, correct? Yeah. Okay. So you collapse more from just the exhaustion and the drain, the physical drain, you know, bleeding all over the place and whatever. You go to the hospital tent, you get checked out, they work on you. It's not nearly as severe as Vidimar. Vidimar, if I misspoke, I realize now that maybe I did misspeak. Vidimar is unconscious for the rest of the trip, basically. Because he's down to, what, like two hit points, I think? Two hit points. Yeah, you're... On a trip. Yeah, he is on a trip. You, uh, for Everhart, he, you know, after a few hours, you're okay again. You're definitely sore. You're definitely like, yep, that's definitely going to leave a mark. I'm fucked for a while. Um, but you're otherwise relatively ambulatory. Uh, meaning, for those that don't know, that you're able to get up and move around. I know you know, because you've been classified that before. Um, I, I apologize. I did not mean that in a rude manner. I was... I've also been not classified. Is that cool? Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, non-ambulatory. Um, yeah, let's let's wrap it there. Let's wrap it there, and let's talk about glory uh, for this session. I gave you glory earlier for the duel. You receive 10 glory for witnessing the submission of Duke Gorlo, all three of you. <clears throat> All three of you receive 50 glory for finding these uh, rampaging Saxons. Uh, who got the kill or, and or capture on the Saxon Thane? That was Dallin? Yep. Dallin receives additional 30 for that one. And then it's... Wait. Go ahead. Sorry, go ahead, finish. And then it is 20 per warrior in front of you. Whether captured, whether captured or killed. I thought I had five before I was dragged off the field. You did, yeah, yeah. Vidimar killed one. Uh, Rev, you've got, or excuse me, Everhart has one, two, three, four. Two of them are dead. Two of them are captured, I believe. Yep. Something like that. So there was the there was the one that I killed of the two that I was facing initially. Yeah, yeah, because you fit it, you you did a pseudo coup de gras. And then the other one went off to fight. What's his face? Yeah, the went off to fight one of Amig's knights and then killed him. Yeah. And then you yeah, killed him. Just Talus, hold on, hold on one second. That would be, that would be four. Yeah, not five. I missed yeah. One. So that's twenty. Hold on, what did it say? Yeah, twenty each for the so oh. eighty. So it's one hundred and thirty total for Rev. I mean, Everhart. Talus, what were you saying? Uh, so just to keep my tr in track, like in track uh, of my honor. Gained five for watching the duel between Everhart and the other knight. Yep. Uh. Fuck, my brain's not working. Ten for oh. watching. Ten for watching Duke Gor Gorlo surrender to the king. Okay. And then fifty. For this fight? Fifty oh. for the fight. And twenty additional for each person that you killed or captured. So he gets, he gets fifty plus twenty. Yeah. Yeah, because after he killed the first one, or beat the first one, the other one oh, beat him. Yeah. And the then... Other, the, other one, the other one did a cup check and... 85. <laughs> yep. And then, uh, Dallin, you get 20 for the one, and 30 for a total of 50, it looks like here. Uh, so you get 100 for the entire battle, plus 10 uh, for the duel, and 10 for Gorlo. So 120. 10, 10. Yep, that sounds right. All right, and then yeah. uh, the yeah, clarify, is there any additional glory for capturing versus killing? No, because I'm not sure about that. And then oh, what's the uh, bounty on a thane? I'm gonna have to look that up. I'll, I'm gonna have to put that in the next session. I'll be... Okay, so I'll put that as a note in the end of my. In yeah, the end of yeah. You will oh. look up. I think it's a warrior. A, yeah, I will. I will look up the values. Uh, for the warriors and the thane, it's not going to be terribly large, but it's going to be something. Saxons, Saxons are stingy. We're not yeah, dealing with so, them tonight. 
Yeah, it's like one Thane and what, two warriors we yeah. guaranteed off of them? Yep, and for the record, that, that, well, to be clear, also, it's actually not a bounty, it's a ransom. If you pay, or excuse me, if they pay it, they, those individuals will get to go home. That you captured. Yep. Just for the record and clarity. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The um, is, there, there is ransoms, but mm -hmm. the Thane might actually have a bounty, like, there might be an, an English lord, or, um, not really English in this case, but a British lord, who... It's like, yeah, I want that thing. That is a possibility. We'll see what comes up next week. Up, up to you. Yeah. All right. Well, that will take it to the end of the evening. Let's start closeout, starting with, actually, Rev. Words for tonight and final thoughts. My name is Rev. I'm sick of fighting things. <laughs> you can catch me on Twitter at Nipples. No, um, stop, stop, stop. And my OnlyFans is nope. for Life. <laughs> wow, Rev. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, I want to point out really Are fast. You sure, Rev? They don't count as your toes. They belong to your surgeon after as much as work as that poor people has done on it. That's to be fair, I have, probably I have fair. several toes with no toenails because of surgical issues. Wow. Anyway, I think, by the way, just for the record, and this probably won't what? help me out a whole lot, I believe my thought process of adding that Thane into this fight was believing that you guys would be stronger now than you were two Honestly, years ago. if you waited one more round, it would have been fine. Yeah, it that also... When you did. Yeah, I th in my notes, I had, you guys were fighting six fight, uh, warriors, and I had it to add the Thane after the first two go down, and you're right, maybe if I'd waited just a little bit longer... Should have been after the first four. Yeah. It would have been one on one on one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at, okay, at which point. Balancing timing. Yeah. Just, yeah. just to clarify, those toes with the missing toenails look fabulous after my girlfriend has painted nail polish on them. So. Well, <laughs> kudos for her. We're gonna move on now, because uh, I'm. T I don't want to. I don't want to talk about your toes anymore. I'm done. Ro, please, for the love of God, save us and your. Closing thoughts for the evening, please. I happen to know that there is a section on Etsy where you can buy pre-made um, glue on toenails and fingernails. Can we get away from toes? That's really where I'm going with this. <laughs> away from toes. The scar tissue over the pads of where the nails used to be. Oh my god. It's nail polish well enough that it's okay. All right, well, time for the ice cream is my exit. Oh, yes. <laughs> Oh, is he really dipping out like that? I don't blame him. I'm about to do the same. Oh, he really did, too. All right. All right, my friends. Oh, he just left ahead of time. He did. He said something about ice cream. All right. Hey, 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 hey. What? That means somebody's going to flip the table? No, it's still locked. All right, that is it, my friends. That is everything for this week. Or, excuse me. I'm sorry. That is it for tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you, for everybody, that stopped by. Thank you, everybody, for hanging out. Uh, join us again tomorrow as we return to Second Star, the Traveler 2300 uh, AD role-playing game experience, uh, where the players continue their exploration into what exactly is going on with the OMS Andrew Carnegie. And then Thursday, still in the air, I have not fully committed or decided uh, as to whether or not we will be doing Operation Turning Points, Operation Revival placement trials. In the meantime... This world is a crazy place. I've got some crazies right here to prove it. But make sure you're doing what you got to do to take care of you and yours. And as for me and mine, we're out of here. Have yourselves a wonderful evening. We'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks a lot.